am Nancy Silverton, and I was your circuit court clerk for 24 years, and I thank you. It was great. I enjoyed it. I'm thankful for my retirement and my Social Security, and, and I just thank the people of Franklin County. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I retired August 31st, 2010. Uh, was retired about two weeks and actually had in mind wanting to work in project preservation where Dr. Tommy Smith's wife worked so with those old records and I didn't know exactly what I was going to do. But two weeks after I retired I found myself in the Franklin County Jail. Um, <laughs> place, yes, working on the inside there with with the inmates. I was working uh, with Christine Hopkins who has the it's now called New Tennessee Rural Reentry, but she's done this for several years. And while I'm on the subject of Chris State and Rural Reentry, and I see uh, Ron Bailey sitting here, it's wonderful what they all do. Ron Bailey's drug court director. Diane Hand and Steve Blunt are part of that too. I hope I'm not missing somebody. <clears throat> They're a part of the drug team. Uh, we're seeing um, from Sheriff Fuller. We're having to do a jail inspection. And Sheriff Fuller says that it might be, we might require even more for it not for the work of drug court and the uh, re entry program. Anyway, I ended up working for Christine in the re entry program with jail inmates for about two years. It was a real eye opener, although I've been in the clerk's office for years, but actually working in the jail personally with the inmates was an eye-opener and it was heartbreaking to see so many people just in and out. The, the location, uh, they would go out on probation or be released and it wouldn't be long until they'd be back in there and a whole lot, of course, because of the drug, the drug problem, which over the years has just apparently gotten worse. Fast forward a couple of years, I did that for a couple of years and it was very rewarding work, by the way. Then in 2013, they started talking about the Affordable Care Act. And I thought, insurance is complicated. And I'm not going to help some people if I learn about the Affordable Care Act. So I started going to training sessions uh, in Nashville, learned about the Affordable Care Act and Medicaid. I didn't realize at the time, if you're going to help folks with health insurance, you've got to know the Affordable Care Act and Medicaid. And that's sort of where it really got, I guess, exciting is not the word. It got very frustrating when I discovered that not everybody would be covered by the Affordable Care Act. Not everybody would be eligible. Uh, December approached, December 2014, and Governor Haslam came out with his plan called Insure Tennessee. That would be sort of a version of Medicaid expansion, which our, le our legislature had refused to pass. And I'll, I need to back up just a little bit. And y'all have all heard this so much, you probably know it. But the original Affordable Care Act, when it was written way back, included a provision that all states would expand Medicaid. The Affordable Care Act, people would be eligible with incomes up to what I think starting at 100% and going up. Under that, everybody else would be eligible for some form of Medicaid. But the Supreme Court, when they heard the case, said, no, you can't make a state, you can't force the states to expand Medicaid. Some states have, some haven't. Tennessee is one that refuses to do so, which leaves a lot of folks out there <coughs> uninsured. And I was shocked when, in January of 2015, when I just knew Governor Haslam's plan would be approved and all these people, I had a list of all these people that I was going to get insurance for, uh, when it passed. Well, of course, it didn't. And you know, there's, there's been uh, a whole lot going on pro and con ever since. And, what I wanted to do, I, I've worked personally and still do with these folks. <clears throat> I'm sorry. And I wanted to put a face on some of these fight veterans. You hear the number that this includes the ones that are in the gap that cannot get insurance coverage or, or and, uh, are not eligible for Medicaid. Well, I'll back up again. 
they can get insurance coverage. You, anybody can sit down at the computer and at the, at, at the open enrollment time and sign up for the Affordable Care Act. But you get the tax credits if you're just within a certain income range. If you're under that 100%, or if you're over, I think, 400%, you'll pay the full price and won't get the tax credits. Um, but I wanted to put a face on actual people that I actually deal with <clears throat> that, are being, that are going uninsured. We hear figures thrown around, 280,000 people. We hear 24 to 28,000 veterans that are still uninsured. From the veteran, for the veterans, there are veterans that don't have insurance, you know, covered by the VA. There are veterans that maybe the veteran has the insurance, but their spouse doesn't. These are actual people. These are people that Bobby Clark out at the, the Veteran Service Officer deals with. <clears throat> he and I work together on some of them. These are, I talked with several older people. Say the wife is 59 or 60 years old. The husband may be already drawing Social Security, maybe have Medicare. She's uninsured. Their income together is not enough to bring them up to that 100% so they can get insurance for her on the Affordable Care Act. She just can't get insurance. There seems to be, or there is an attitude of, well, I'm not going to pay for insurance. I don't want to pay for insurance for somebody that's not working. Most of these people that I see that don't have incomes at the time to qualify them for the Affordable Care Act, <clears throat> have work. They're working people. I get calls from people and they say, I, <clears throat> I've worked all my life and I've been disabled just the last year or so or this year and I don't have enough income for the insurance. And when you actually um, talk to these people and see these people face to face, most, most of these are, are actually people who have worked. Some have worked, got her on the job or got her otherwise, can't go back to work they've lost their insurance, they can't go get the treatment they need, so they can't go back to work. Um, another category of people that really, really need insurance bad are the ones I referred to coming out of jail. Diane Hamm, Steve Blunt, work with these people <clears throat> all the time. When they come out of jail, inmates out of jail, most of them probably need mental health and or drug addiction <coughs> treatment. If they don't have money and they're in jail and they're mostly poor people, they're out without the help they need to get a job. A oh, uh, drug court does help a bunch of them, so does rural uh, reentry, but they can't help them all. They need access, ready access to treatment. I mean, so they could go out there and go to work and be productive citizens. Their families wouldn't be devastated. It's devastating to families to have uh, drug, drug abuse in the family. Some of you know this. The terrible tragedies that we have by disturbed people, people with mental health issues, could that have been avoided if that person had had ready access to health insurance, mental health insurance. Our veterans that come back that have problems that are not in a, a category that they can obtain health insurance. So that's what I want to want you to think about. In addition to the people that actually need insurance, and I, I, I speak to Facebook, I put this on Facebook, one day last week or the week before, my granddaughter who's 20, and she lives out on her own with her husband called me. She was sick. Her little boy had been up sick all night. <clears throat> he finally gone to sleep. <clears throat> and the husband was taking care of him. She was just, she could hardly sit up. She was so sick. And we came to the closest little urgent care clinic. Got in there. They took care of her. We were back home within an hour. Had she not had insurance, we would have had to taken her to the hospital, the emergency room. And she was so sick, I hate to think of having to sit there with somebody that sick in the emergency room. Mm -hmm. And it, it's awful being without insurance. And it's costly. Hospitals are closing. There's a 
Dr. Smith knows not his, but there's a rural hospital in McNary County, I believe, is it McNary County, that just closed, and I was just reading an article about the city officials there, the county officials, how awful it is for those people not to have access to a hospital. Bad things are, are, are happening, and, and by the way, some people will mention to me, my premiums have gone up, my affordable care insurance premiums have gone up. I also read that as more people are being insured, as more people are getting into the system, and if they can get treatment and not be going around half dead with diabetes or, or the things they can't get treatment for, if they could get insurance and get treated, all of our premiums probably would come down. All of those wouldn't have to be frozen. And I just wanted to, and I respect that there are, there are feelings on the other side of that, and I respect that. But what I wanted to do really is just hopefully put a face on it. And, and it's costed Sheriff Tim Fuller all the headlines with regard to the expansion of the jail. A whole lot of people, of those people, I think he said one time maybe as many as 50% are in there because of drug addiction and mental health issues, which they, they need to be treated, which I won't even get into the opioid and the heroin. We know that's awful too. <coughs> we're we're going to have to make a change out there, really, uh, to take care of these problems. And it's, it's not only bad for people and families themselves, but it's costly to society as a whole. All of us are going to have to pay for the jail expansion. And uh, so that's what I wanted to that, that was my exciting retirement I got into. I well done. <laughs> but, but no, it is so rewarding to help people and deal with people that need to help. I got used to that in the clerk's office, and I think it's addictive. And uh, I want to keep doing what I'm doing. Um, as long as I can. But that's, that's all I've got, I guess.